the idea was to illustrate a lot of the fables of La Fontaine in these little towns around Chateau Jerry, which has a museum about La Fontaine, and people would come there. It was called the Fabulous Labyrinth. It was a good idea, and they organized the competition very, very well. Well, the only one in town that was competing, it didn't have a wash place, it just had an old pigeon tower, <laughs> which was part of a ruined chateau, and I was so intrigued that I went out and saw the pigeon tower. Here, the pigeon tower is, has been restored. It was even more beautiful before it was restored, when you could see every stone, but nevertheless, I was very touched by it, and this town wanted the story called The Two Pigeons. So that was it. I did a, I did a study, actually, a study of that was drawing. So I don't have it, unfortunately, so I can't show it to you. But I decided I would not do a sculpture that symbolized uh, what La Fontaine was saying. What he was saying is nothing, nothing is more precious than friendship. Nothing. And uh, it's a very beautiful thought. Can't possibly do one sculpture and have anybody think that this had anything. I couldn't just, I couldn't see it. The language was so beautiful, and La Fontaine is such a part of the people's lives, that to make a sculpture which would symbolize this seemed to me to be absolutely out, out of the question. So I decided I would just illustrate the story of the two pigeons now. The story goes, uh, well, I, I can't tell you, I won't tell you the whole story, I just, not, but here is the pigeon who wanted to go out and see the world, he wanted to go out and see the world, here he is flying away. Here are the two pigeons reunited when he comes back from deciding that the world is not so worth seeing as being with his friend. Now, where you're sitting, might be just outside of this little town halls, this little tiny town's town hall. When you walked up to the steps of that town hall and you looked to your left, you saw the pigeon tower and you saw the fountain. It was used to be a farm, but the, but the town had bought it back. But that's what you saw when you looked to the left. So when you looked to the left, you'd see the beginning and the end of the story. And then, but the pigeon flew away, he had lots of misadventures. Now, in the competition for this work, and what they wanted the artist to pay attention to was this structure underpinning a roof. Of course, it is the structure underpinning that roof. And it's uh, made in a wood that cannot be, uh, that refuses termites and insects, so it's been there for a long time. And it is a very beautiful structure, even though I don't have a photo that shows it exclusively. Now, inside the pigeon tower, these are all the houses of the little pigeons. And pigeons at that time were raised for food. Also, it was a sign of wealth of the man who had the most pigeons. This pigeon tower happened to be the last remaining thing of a chateau that had been destroyed. And where the, 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 the window where the pigeon is flying out, that's where the real pigeons came and went when, when they were living there. There's not time to tell you about the marvelous adventure of getting this up the stairs of that tower, which were no wider than this table. And it had to be made in many parts, it came apart. But on top of it, at the top of the stairway was a right turn into the, into the tower. Anyway, I was lucky in the studio. I managed to take that in. I managed to construct it in enough parts so that it could get up there and spread itself out and look like a tree for the pigeon. Anyway, it was, we had fun putting that up, you can imagine. The first misadventure of the pigeon is to, is to find himself in a terrible storm, and he takes shelter in this tree. Anyway, there's the pigeon taking shelter in the tree. But he continues his adventures, and when I saw the pigeon tower and I saw that white spot, it's, it's a place where the pigeon, little pigeon houses had been destroyed. And I said to the mayor, now don't repair that because I can tell the second misadventure of the pigeon, who is attacked by an eagle, is attacked by a, a vulture or a hawk, and that saves the life of the pigeon, who had been caught in a net set out by a farmer to catch pigeons. And then the third misadventure is, he settles finally, he's saved from the hawk, 
And he's, he's sitting beside the barn and wondering, oh dear, this is pretty terrible. And around the corner comes a little boy with a slingshot. And that is when he decides to fly away and return to his friend, because that was the good life. The friend had said, why do you want to leave here? You have everything you need. You have food, you have shelter, you have meat. Anyway, uh, one last little story about this. When I first saw the Pigeon Tower, it was very, it was leaning, sort of sagging, and I thought, oh, what a pity, because it does have so much charm. Well, this was the, the fountain uh, from which the farm animals drank, and just outside of them, the main basin, the waterfall flows over into a narrow strip, or, you know, a little narrow, a little narrow, it's like a little narrow stream right around the bottom of the fountain. That was for the sheep and the goats. Then the main fountain was for the horse and the cattle. And of course, the top of the fountain and cast iron was for the birds. This has since been turned into a home for the elderly. And also, uh, uh, over here on the left side, mm -hmm. that has been turned to a, into a place where associations of the village can meet. People who play chess, people who want to do this and to do that. I should just add one last detail, since I've told you everything you possibly ever want to know about this town. <laughs> As you can see, that's the stairway. The branches had to go up. So on the top level, that's where the story of the Pigeons is told. And incidentally, my daughter, who is a very, very talented person indeed, did a recitation of this recording of the fable, so that people, when they go inside, when they turn on the lights, so to speak, it becomes a, a recitation of the, of the fable with lights shifting from misadventure to misadventure. It has a lot of charm, and she did a beautiful job with that. Now, the bottom level, became, which had ovens, which nobody knew what they were used for, but anyway, it became a sort of a visiting artist studio, and the second level became a museum because what there was in that town many years ago was a button factory. And they have lots of artifacts from the town, but the every kind of button is displayed on bone, silver, and every, every kind of material. And my sister Nancy, who came to the inauguration of this project, brought them a, a sort of a, a cup, I believe it was, from the Congress. You know, you could buy these, get these things from the Congress would have the right certain number of very lovely gifts that they could hand out. And that is displayed in the museum as well. Anyway, I tell that story because it's, uh, in, in my own work, it's a unique example of having decided just to uh, serve the work of somebody else, actually. And also, the interest of the town because this tiny little town would treasure the story of the two pigeons as a treasure in the hearts of people that they don't forget. So that they'd be far more interested in having fable illustrated than they would in seeing my idea of the preciousness of friendship.